Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We have tons of fun here on this channel talking about random things but mostly about all things makeup and beauty related and today I have a chatty video for you guys this is another one of my cookies and chat videos I started this series a couple videos back right where I'm sampling the latest flavors from crumble cookies and chatting with you guys about anything that pops into my mind. And this time around, I actually have questions and topics directly from you guys because I made a little prompt on my Instagram stories. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. You guys left some questions for me and some topics and we're gonna go over them while we try out these cookies. I don't have to tell you what crumble cookies is anymore, do I? It's a pop-up bakery, it's all over the country, there are numerous locations, there's probably one close to you, and they have a rotating flavor menu every week. There are different flavors to try all the time, and that's why I like testing them out. We're going to dive right in, I'm gonna pull up the questions, but also pull up crumble cookies, so I can tell you the flavors of the week, and we can taste and go. I don't know if people wanna stay anonymous, so I'm just gonna leave names out of it. If I ask you a question, then you know it's you. There aren't many questions, so I should be able to get through all of these. And I'm gonna start out with the first flavor of the week. This one is Mallow Cream. It's inspired by the iconic cereal, rich with white drops, vanilla marshmallow frosting, and Lucky Charms marshmallows sprinkled on top. So this is inspired by Lucky Charms, oh my God. It's 220 calories per serving, which is a quarter of the cookie. You see how big the cookies are, right? And the full cookie is 880 calories. Ciao! Let's go ahead and try this cookie really quick. Ooh, I got a big piece. Look what I did, guys. So I got a cookie cutter. And I, well, you can't even see, hold on. I want one that's shaped like an actual heart. Oh my God. So I got a cookie cutter that is the shape of a heart. And look, I cut out little chunks. They're so cute. However, they're a little bit big. So we'll see how that goes. It's still not a quarter of a cookie, but geez, still a lot of sugar for me to go through. So I only have coconut water this time around. I'm not drinking anything with sugar in it. So let's taste this. That is actually pretty delicious. It's like a sugar cookie, but it has white drops in it. Are those white chocolate chips? In the cookie itself. And then the frosting is a marshmallow frosting. Mm. Their frosting is always delicious. And then they have the little marshmallow toppings. It does taste like um, Lucky Charms. Ooh. Mm, mm-hmm. That is delicious. Mm, 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 mm. I'm gonna give that a seven and a half, a solid seven and a half. Hey, I gotta save some ratings, all right? So seven and a half. And the first question is, what company do you think Marlena Stell is working on to open next? <laughs> Y'all are messy, oh my God. So Marlena Stell is one of the OG beauty creators here on YouTube. And she is also the founder of the now defunct Makeup Geek Cosmetics. Makeup Geek started out as a forum, a beauty forum similar to like Lipstick Alley. We also had, what was that one called? Oh my God. Spectra, oh my God. Do you guys remember Spectra? You have to be like an OG to remember Spectra, right? So Spectra was a blog kind of beauty forum that was before Instagram, right? Where people would go and post their looks of the day. Remember arm candy? Oh my God, it was such a good time. But people would like come together in that forum and share tips and tricks and share like makeup finds and all that stuff, right? Makeup Geek was kind of from that era. She created her own blog where she had her forms and stuff. And then she spun it off because she was getting so popular. She spun it off into her own cosmetic line. And up until recently, she was available also in Target. But things took a turn, okay? COVID, supply chain issues. She just couldn't keep the business up and running and maintaining its profitability. 
And I think also she had a lot of things going on personally with her health and then she also got remarried and had a baby. So like her personal life is evolving and there's a lot going on. So the company shut down, long story short, all right? That was not a short story, but anyway. The company shut down and I think they may have like a few stragglers, you know, a couple of products still available that you can get at a steep discount on her website. Either way, company is now defunct. So she also had this um, clothing line at one point. I think it was called Marstay. Yeah, Marstay because it was a play off her name. And so this person is wondering like, what do I think her next adventure will be? And I do think she will try to open another business just because once you've gotten that, you know, the entrepreneur bug, like you're going to keep trying to open another business and take on another venture, you know? So I'm thinking she might do something maybe wellness related or even baby related, like family related. I just feel that in her spirit. But I think she's still carrying like a lot of bitterness from the old days when a lot of influencers kind of screwed her over. And she still talks about it to this day and I'm like, she is one of those people that can't let things go. And I get it, cause I'm one of those people like, I will not let it go, child. She doesn't let a damn thing go. She's always gonna get her lick back because her most recent video, I think, she was talking about um, Jacqueline Hill and how Jacqueline is underhanded. And Jacqueline was one of the people that screwed her over, right? But <laughs> I feel like she's gonna probably go into one of those like, women upliftment kind of situations, you know? I also feel like she's had so many health problems and she has this baby. I feel like she would take that wellness route, like to find organic foods or like organic clothing for the baby or, you know, something like that. I don't know. I just don't see her doing anything else in fashion because her brand was a flop, okay? She tried to position herself as like a luxury brand and I'm like, Really? No. She tried to be like size inclusive and create different designs, but I don't think she actually understands what goes into running a business of the size that she's trying to run and how many investors she needs to have involved. And she seems to want to have a lot of control as well because she wants to be the CEO. And I don't think CEO is in her DNA. I think she has a great creative mind, but I don't know that CEO is in her, you know, it's like not her thing. I don't know. I don't know what she will do. And really and truly, I don't care. I just wish her all the best. Like, good luck to you, but I really don't care. I don't care that much. In case you don't know, me and her, <laughs> we weren't on the best of terms. I don't care that much, but I'm sure she still does. So moving right along, let's get the other cookie. So this one is cookies and cream. Oh my God, I love cookies and cream. So it's a marbling of chocolate and vanilla cookies all topped with a white chocolate drizzle and crumbly cookie pieces. Oh yes, oh my God, that sounds so good. 150 calories per serving, 600 total. Let's try her out. Mm-hmm, come on. Give it some, mm-hmm, mm, mm, mm. This one also has, mm, those little white chunks in it. I don't, yeah, what is that? Um, mm, it doesn't taste as delicious as I wanted it to. Or I expected it to, really. Maybe I hyped it up too much. It's kind of plain. Let me try some more. It's not as impressive as I was anticipating, as much as I was expecting. Like I was ready for it to be super delicious. It's just okay. In fact, the Lucky Charms one tastes better. So this is like a six. Basic six. It's not really chocolatey. It's really just like a vanilla cookie with some white chocolate, which is really sweet, but it's not overly sweet. It doesn't taste like sweet frosting, but it's not that delicious. It tastes really plain like a plain sugar cookie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next question. Well, this isn't a question, this is like a comment. So she says here, I would love to see more food day videos. Yours are simply the best. You always go in depth. Oh my God, I appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. So here's the thing with food day. Food day are Japanese handmade brushes, okay? So they're made from natural hair bristles and they're beautiful and I love them. I have some from Refer. 
I have some from Sonia Kashuk. Okay, I just washed my brushes, so I don't have like a ton of brushes here. We have Chikohodo and Hakuhodo. Listen, okay, I love brushes, but I've fallen off when it comes to food, eh? I find myself using a lot of BK Beauty brushes that are, see, ooh, there's a hair somewhere. Child, one of these hairs jumped out at me. But BK Beauty brushes are synthetic and I love them. I also have a ton of the Sonia G Fusion Series brushes that I'm in love with. And I haven't really gotten any new Fude brushes lately. You let me know what you would like me to cover as far as Fude goes. Because I've covered the styles and shapes. I've covered... Have I? think so. I think so. Didn't I? Maybe I plan to, but I think I did, right? Styles and shapes, um, like the different hairs. I've done the cleaning and caring for the brushes. I don't know like what other videos I could do that are food day specific that don't require me to buy new brushes because I'm not really interested in buying new brushes. So let me know, what would you be interested in seeing? I can definitely do those videos, but you have to let me know, right? Let me know. You don't have to like go in detail about what you would like to see, but give me an idea of what would interest you. Like I can fill in the gaps with like the actual body of the content. But give me a topic, like what do you want to know? I was considering doing like best eyeshadow blending brushes or laid on brushes or even like face brushes. But to be honest, a lot of it would include synthetic brushes and that's not food aid. So you guys got to let me know what you want to see in case you're curious and you're interested as well. All right, another question. Would you share your favorite perfumes? Oh, this is easy, hold on. I don't go crazy when it comes to perfume and fragrance, okay? One, I smell like outside and grass with most of my fragrances. So I'm just like, let me stay away, child. It's very rare that I'll just find a perfume that smells great on me. Most of them smell generic or they smell too sweet. Or like I said, I end up smelling like outside and like grass. I can sometimes smell like a goat too and I don't want that in my life. So I'm very, very specific about my fragrances. The majority of the time, if you smell me outside, okay? Why would you smell me outside? But if you ever met me in person, just on a random day, I probably smell like Daisy Dream from Marc Jacobs. This is like my everyday fragrance. I love this. This smells really, really good. This is a very fresh, lightweight fragrance. It may be a little bit flowery, in fact. It smells nice and I like how it smells and it smells good on me. It doesn't go grassy. It doesn't smell too citrusy or too sharp. It's just a nice light fragrance. So this is like my daily fragrance. If I'm going out, but like not to any night activities, like it's just a day activity, but I'm getting dressed up like I'm putting on an outfit, you know what I'm saying? Then I'm gonna pull out my clean fragrance. This is, oh my God, which one is this one? The label is gone. The label is gone. Where is the label? Oh my God, I think this is clean fresh though, or clean linen, clean linen, right? This smells so good. Again, really nice fresh fragrance. And up on initial spray, it can smell a little bit green. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you just cut some grass green, but then it settles down on me and it just smells fresh and light. I love powdery fragrances. I love linen type fragrances. Anything crisp and airy and fresh, like fresh laundry is what I love. So I love this. And then another fragrance I love is from Replica. This is Lazy Sunday Morning. Another great one. It just smells, Replica has some great scents and they're very nuanced. Like they have a smoky fragrance, like come on, you know? This is also like a linen fragrance. It says soft skin and bed linen, which is exactly why I gravitated towards it. And that's exactly what it smells like. It smells like a fresh shower with fresh linen. It's glorious. I love that. And then for, you know, the night out when I want to smell sexy and sassy, I pull out the Tom Ford. Okay. So this is the metallic from Tom Ford. Oh my God. So pricey. And... It has this vanilla undertone to it and a hint of amber. 
it's sweet without being overly sweet and it is sexy it is a fragrance that I'm always told I smell good in right if you smell me outside at night this is what I smell like then when I go to sleep my sheets smell like this oh my god so good but then I layer it with this new one that I picked up from dead cool this is milk so this is a genderless and vegan perfume and it's meant to be layered okay ah oh, so good it's also a fresh fragrance and I find myself wearing this on its own even though it says to layer it it's best layered if you layer this with even like the Marc Jacobs Daisy it's gonna end up giving it this I don't know like this extra oomph to it that smells extra fresh and light and I love that when I mix this with the Tom Ford as well it kind of enhances the fragrance of the Tom Ford so I love those fragrances so there you have it favorite fragrances that's what I smell like if you smell me anywhere it's one of those it's one of those I have other fragrances as well especially from replica I have a couple more from Gucci because Gucci is just one of those brands that I really enjoy but other than that I don't really go fragrance crazy I'm very like low-key when it comes to my fragrance collection I used to have way more but I'm not going out as much. I'm not going to the office, so I don't feel the need to like have a ton of fragrances. All right, I gotta go faster, child. So next cookie up is the Mint Brownie. This is for those who love brownies with a minty zing topped with a chocolate ganache. This one is 200 calories per serving, 800 calories total. It has a minty frosting and a chocolate ganache. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I have discovered that I like a mint chocolate cookie just because I've been trying out crumble cookies They do mint chocolate a lot and I do like that flavor because it's not like peppermint or like toothpaste It's just this hint of mint and it has that sugary taste. It's really good and with the chocolate it offsets it So it doesn't end up being too sweet That's a good one. I'm gonna give that a seven too. That's a good seven. Mm-hmm. I like that one next question what's the worst product you've ever tried all right all right worst product i've ever tried i've tried so many bad products guys and so many great ones the worst products i've ever tried would be like drugstore eyeshadow palettes or like really glowy foundations i think that's my pet peeve and the worst thing that comes to mind is the fit me was it fit me y'all i'm sitting here trying to figure out what foundation that was wow it yeah i don't remember i really don't and the thing about it is i don't have those products in my collection anymore because i get rid of them and the makeup has improved so much over the years and i've been in this community for well over 10 years now so i've tried a lot of products it's so hard to narrow it down but it was definitely like a drugstore glowy foundation that made me look like i was frying chicken for 10 hours straight awful just absolutely awful and i also remember really disliking the elf putty bronzers that's like a recent hate of mine so there's one but there are quite a few products that are really awful out there but i've been lucky i've tried really good products i can't remember i'll think about it and probably do a video of the worst products i've tried but i can't think of anything like right off the top of my head do you miss new york Ye no okay it's winter now in new york and it's cold they haven't gotten a ton of snow from what i've heard but it's cold, right? I don't know that I truly, truly miss it. There are aspects of New York that I miss, right? I was there for 20 years, so of course I'm gonna miss some things. 20 years? Oh my God, I was there that long? Wow, 20 years. So there are aspects of it that I miss, like the food. The food, oh my God, the food here? Like takeout is such trash. The food and the accessibility to certain things, trash. But I mean, I'm getting around. I cook mostly, so it's not a big deal. But I prefer New York for the food and then I miss like spring spring I'm going to miss because once those flowers started blooming oh it was beautiful to see and the air was fresh and crisp like I probably miss that but I don't miss the cold so overall I'm like no I'm good and it smells funny so 
I prefer where I am now like I'm a tropical girl at heart so I prefer the warm weather so that's always gonna trump anything New York has to offer but I'm going back to visit not visit visit but I have like a client there that I'm going to have to go to so I will be there in a couple of weeks so and yeah, no I don't really miss it all right next cookie butterscotch chip so this is a sweet and smooth duo of butterscotch chips and flaky salt that sounds delicious 160 calories per seven 640 total let's try this one out That does not taste good. That tastes like roach. Oh my God. <laughs> How do you know what roach tastes like, Tina? Y'all ever been to a roachy apartment and you just smell the air? You inhale it and you taste it in the back of your throat? That's what it tastes like. Roach. Roach. You never got somebody in apartment to say, just taste the air and you're like, mm -mm. that's a little roachy. Mm -mm. Tastes a little bit like, you know, bug spray. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And it tastes chalky too. You know those um, vitamins that we used to take back in the day? Flintstones vitamins. And them chalky ass vitamins. And if you ever tasted it, had that chalky kind of metallic aftertaste. That's what this tastes like. This tastes disgusting. That is so nasty. Mm -mm. I'm going to give that. Mm, I don't even want to eat no more. That's a two. That is a two. I don't know who would love that. So, you know, that's why I'm giving it a two because maybe one of y'all would like that, but that was nasty. That did not taste like butterscotch. No, mm -mm. it really tastes roachy for sure. Mm -mm. It don't even taste, mm -mm. mm -mm. me don't like it. It tastes like Flintstones vitamins. Me don't like it. Irious. <laughs> Moving on. I need something else for quick, quick, quick. So this is the sugar cookie with the gold coin. So... It's some sweet vanilla smoothness with a chocolate gold coin on top. Don't spend it all in one place. So it's just a vanilla cookie. It has 180 calories or 720 total. I took off the gold coin, but I'm going to eat it, Um, you know, after. Mm -hmm. That's plain and bland. It's just a vanilla cookie, which is not a bad thing, but it's very plain. I would give this mm, a five. It's not that great. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's not that great, but I really need to get that roach taste out of my mouth. That's not that good. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm. <coughs> Loud it all I choked me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Somebody asked me if I enjoyed Thailand. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I still owe you guys the vlog for that. Ooh, choking chop. I'm going to try to film that this weekend. I have all the footage, right? But I just haven't done the voiceover. And I just need to sit down and do it. So I will be doing that. But Thailand was amazing. I went to Bangkok and Phuket. Absolutely amazing. Loved it. All right. Oh, someone told me to have a beautiful, wonderful day. Thank you so much. Oh my God, thank you. Okay, she also said, can you chat about the Little Mermaid live action movie with Hailey Berry? Please, thank you, and have a beautiful one. Thank you. Um, I'm not a Disney person. I could care less really about Disney. The Little Mermaid, it was a fun movie, and I liked it because we had Sebastian, the little crab with the little accent, you know, even though, like, low-key, it was mocking, like, a Jamaican accent. And the live-action version, from what I can tell, it doesn't look that great. The crab is, like... I mean, yeah, it's live action, so the crab is going to actually be a crab. But they couldn't, like, make it a little cute. Like, it's a whole crab. And then Flounder. Flounder, who's supposed to be this cute yellow fish. Now he looks, he looks a hot man. He looks scary. Oh, my God. But, I mean, Haley, Holly, Haley. No, Holly Berry, Haley Bailey. Right? Haley Bailey? Child, don't ask me. She, mm, I'm excited for her, but I still feel like her hair should have been red. It should have been more red. It's more copper right now. But I feel like they should really have embraced the essence of Ariel and made her hair fiery red. Instead, it's just, oh, coppery and beautiful. But, um, I'll, I'll watch it. I'm just, I'm not going out of my way to watch it. Does that make sense? The story is also a little bit, like, questionable. 
you're gonna give up your voice for some man girl don't do that don't do that like these disney movies what kind of mm -mm, mm -mm. they give little girls all kinds of bad ideas stop it mm -mm. moana me okay give me moana any day don't give me no damn little mermaid giving up her why you give up and you gave it up to a sea witch you outlandish this is how women be acting no that's not how we be acting so Eh, eh. All right, I'm gonna end on this, which is kind of the end of it anyway. Let me try. I have two more cookies to try. So let's try the next one up. So they have a mystery cookie for the week. So each location is going to have a different cookie. So my mystery cookie was this chocolate cookie that I think was called a silk pie. You know, I don't see it now because I bought this um, yesterday, which was Wednesday. And they have a different cookie now Thursday through Saturday, which is, what is that? The Cake Batter Blondie. Mmm! But I'm gonna try the Silk Cream. I don't have any info on this. We're just gonna try it. So it has like chocolate shavings, a chocolate whipped mousse, and then like a little vanilla taste, and then it's a chocolate cookie. Mmm! The chocolate cream. It's delicious. It's light. It's not too sweet. That's nice, but it's very soft. It is very soft. It's falling apart. And the last question we're going to answer is about divorce. Mm-hmm. You know. So, this person asked a couple of questions. Do you see yourself getting married again? And what's life like after a divorce? Because she thinks it will help a lot of women. Here's the thing. I don't think... I'm the best case study for a divorce, all right? Because my divorce was amicable and I still like my ex-husband. <laughs> Him and I are still cool, so it's like, I am not the best person to talk about it, but I'll talk about it anyway. The next cookie is one that was left over from last week. This is the blueberry crumble cookie. They had an extra, so I'm gonna try it. So it has blueberries. I love blueberries. And blueberries are good for you. And then this is supposed to be a crumble cookie with a lemon frosting. Again, I don't know the calories, but I'm gonna eat it. Mm-hmm. Anything lemon or cookies and cream or mint, I'm gonna have it. Mm-hmm. Mmm. And then it has little blueberries in it too. Mmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Hello, sweet. I'm gonna give that one a seven and a half. Yeah, that's a good one. So let's rank them really quick while I still remember them and we'll go some more into divorce. So, bottom of the pile, I have the roach cookie. Butterscotch chip, that tastes like roach. It's bottom of the pile. Get away from me. Nasty, okay? Don't like it. Absolutely not. Then next to that, we probably have the vanilla cookie. So this is the sugar gold coin cookie. It's plain. It's not bad. It's just, it's plain. It's simple. Nothing to write home about. And then it would be the cookies and cream because that was very bland. Compared to my expectations, that was, you know, it was not that great. And then the next one I would probably give to the silk cream pie. It's kind of neck and neck with the silk cream pie and the milk brownie. Both are chocolate, both are good, but I prefer that hint of mint a little bit more. So it will be the silk pie and then the mint brownie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I'm going to give it to the blueberry cookie from last week and then the malo cream, which is the Lucky Charms cookie. Mm-hmm. All of those, yeah. I wasn't as impressed with the flavors this week, but this Lucky Charms one, I'm gonna finish that piece, but let me talk about divorce. For those of you who may not know, maybe you're new, I was married for seven years, yes. And if you were on my channel back then, then you would have met my husband because he was in a few videos with me. 
I had a blast being married. Being married was amazing. I married someone that I really clicked with. Like we got along really well. We were best friends before we were anything else and we just had a fun time. We traveled, we went out, we hung out with family. Like we had a great life together. And if I could go back, I would do it again. Which is why I'm saying I'm probably not the best person to talk about divorce because to me, my whole marriage experience was spectacular. And I would get married again if I met somebody that lived up to that again. And it's not that I would necessarily compare them, but you kind of do have to compare them. Like going through that experience, I know what I enjoyed and I know what I don't enjoy. So it's like you have to match that same energy for me to take it there again. Because marriage is this legal binding agreement. Like it's somebody that you expect to spend the rest of your life with like you're gonna make life decisions together you're gonna decide on where to live what house to buy if you're gonna have kids if you're gonna be religious if you're gonna hang out with your family if you're gonna move to another place how is your job you know, like it's it's your whole life that you're planning around this additional person right you're no longer solo so it would have to be someone that is worth it to me marriage was great so I would definitely do it again with the right person under the right circumstances but I'm not chasing it right because being single is all also pretty awesome <laughs> like I don't have to consider someone else's feelings I don't have to think about what someone else is doing or would they be interested in this like I don't have to consider somebody else in my decisions I can get up and move states right and move to be closer to my family and I can decide to just lounge around and do nothing all day or I can pick myself up and go to the Bahamas for a weekend. Like, it's so easy to make decisions when you're single because there's no one else factoring into it. Absolutely love it. But you know, companionship and having somebody around, yeah, 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 that's cute too. But the men these days are crazy. Some of these men, I don't understand what's going on. Like, somebody lost the plot, but I'm not dating the men that are around these days because they're so misogynistic. It's, it's ridiculous. It's like they want a woman that's going to be submissive, but then at the same time, they want you to pay half the bills. Like you think I'm gonna walk around cleaning up after you and still pay half the bills. That's not going to work, sweetie. That's not how that works. That's not how it goes. I'm not going to cook and do all these things. And the thing is with my ex, we split things down the middle. Like I was not responsible for all the laundry and I wasn't responsible for all the cleaning and the cooking. I mean, I did most of the cooking, but he also cooked. So it was like a trade off. So if I don't have that kind of balanced relationship again, it's not going to happen. And then with me, I'm 40. I'm not a spring chicken. These men are chasing 18 year olds. Child, I can't compete with that. I'm out here being 40. I can't, no, I don't have the energy. Okay, and I'm not as dumb to put up with your foolishness. So you can fool some little girl into thinking you're great. You can't fool me, so here we are. What are we gonna do? And I have a great job and a great career. So now, are you gonna be intimidated by that? Are you gonna tell me I'm too strong? I'm too independent? Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? And as far as divorce goes, I had an amicable divorce. There was no animosity. There was no fighting over who gets what and how are we going to split this. None of that. The worst part of divorce was just being sad. Being sad at the loss of a relationship that you thought was going to be forever. Like we said forever plus two days. Like that's that was my guy. Like that was my forever person, you know? And to suddenly be in a place where, oh, that's no longer it. That's, this is not your future anymore. It's time for a change. Like, it hit me hard and I was sad. I was sad for years and I'll still get sad now. Like, oh my God. So I got divorced in 2019 officially. Like, that's when the papers went through. So officially divorced in 2019, but... I was sad for a while guys and I'll tell you right now there's some days that you can say something to me or something will come up. I watch a movie that's really sentimental or it reminds me of what my relationship was and I will just start bawling like a fool just bawling and I'll just go to the shower okay because that's how I deal with things but no it's okay to feel those feelings and like let those emotions happen you're only human right and at the end of the day it's like mourning a loss of a person 
that hasn't passed away, right? So that person is still alive, but you no longer have that connection with them and that you don't, you no longer have the relationship. You no longer see them. You no longer spend every day with them. So it's like, oh my God, you know, it really hurt. And what hurt even more is that he was my best friend. Like if something happened at work, I was calling him first. I'm like, child, guess what happened? Can you imagine? And he would call me too. He's like, guess what happened? And I'm like, what? And he would call me to help him out with decisions. And even after the divorce, he still would like tell me things that happened at work. You know, he's getting this promotion. He's on the director track. Like even when I was switching jobs, I was like, yeah, I'm going to switch jobs. And you know, they're paying me this and it's a good change and I'm going to do it. So, you know, it's like we still speak here or there and we'll catch each other up on life because at the end of the day, we were invested in each other's lives for seven years. And I knew his family. He knew mine. And he was invested in my family and I was invested in his. And it was so sad to like lose that because like his nieces, right? They were my nieces and they loved me so much. I would talk to them all the time. And it's like I've had conversations with them since then, you know, like FaceTime chats because they really still like me. So it's like, it's kind of sad that way. And then even my nephew, like when he got into Mayo Clinic that I just talked about, you know, I, he knows, like he, he texted him, you know, cause they're still cool. So it's like, you have that give and take and I am not the person that's bitter or like angry. So I can't really tell you how to get over that because I never went through that. I just went through a real serious sadness and I cried probably every day, every single night before I went to bed, I probably cried for a good, almost a year. Yeah, like a full year, I cried daily. And initially, I would cry at work. Like during lunch, I would just start crying and I'd have to run to the bathroom. So I cried a lot. I cried a lot. You guys didn't see it. And it's funny because when I finally told people about it, they were like, really? And I'm like, yeah. But no one knew because I hide things well, right? I let you know what I want you to know. But I was bawling like it was sad. It was a very sad thing. And it's like, there's nothing that can prepare you for that. There's nothing that's going to make it easier other than time. It's time. You have to get through it. It's just time. And I wish I could just click my fingers and like be in the next millennia, but it's not going to happen, right? You have to just go through it and it gets easier and easier with the days. And it's like, you just have to go out there and keep experiencing and enjoying life. And what I did after my divorce, I went traveling, right? And I went and saw my friends, I hung out with my family, I kept myself busy, and I poured myself into things that brought me joy, like my makeup. I love doing makeup, so I had fun with my makeup and like dressing up and doing stuff like that. And you know, I just tried to just get through it get through it and move past it because there's nothing else you can do and life is gonna go on and you're gonna go through different changes and eras of your life if you think back you're probably so much different than you were in your teens and then your 20s and then your 30s and your 40s it's always changing it's always evolving and you just gotta go with the flow so there you have it guys. I can talk some more about things like this if you want me to in other chatty videos. But like I said, I don't think I'm going to be the expert in getting through divorce because I didn't have a terrible, terrible experience where I was fighting with my ex like, oh, no, and I don't hate him. You know, I still have love for him. He still has love for me. And push come to shove, if I needed someone to have my back, he would. So it is what it is. You know, life happens, things happen, and you just go with the flow. It's life, you know, you get one. So yeah, there you have it. The cookies weren't that delicious, some were. And I'm gonna eat the last piece, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.